Well, let's kick off talking about the weather, everyone's favourite subject. And I mentioned last week that the weather this winter has been epic, and it really, really has been so ridiculously warm. Well, it all really peaked on Wednesday of this week when we had 31 degrees recorded in the centre of the island from Aria to Tias. And even down on the coast, it was 29 degrees. Um, those kind of daytime temperatures are really unheard of in the middle of winter here, and February is normally the coldest month on the island. I saw one of those Facebook memories on my feed this week where I'd taken a shot of the temperature gauge in our car at dawn as I was leaving the house, and it was showing 8 degrees. Now, on Wednesday this week, I checked the temperature at dawn as I was leaving the house, and it was 24 degrees, so it's a massive, massive difference. Obviously, this is having an effect on the number of people coming here because Northern Europe hasn't had the best of winters. Uh, there's been a lot of rain there, um, storms, strong winds and stuff like that. So they're all booking to come here and enjoy this incredible winter. And we're all looking forward to welcoming more and more of you. Now let's talk about Fermara. Um, those of you who know uh, Fermara, La Caleta de Fermara, uh, there is a main road that runs through the town that goes from the beach towards So. Um, and that road has always been two-way. But last week, um, the road was changed to single direction. So it's own, you're only, you can only travel on it from the beach towards So direction. And what the uh, local town hall have done is put parking spaces on the left-hand side of that road, which used to be the, the lane to, to come from so towards the beach. And there are 200 nose-in parking spaces all along that road now. Um, locals are absolutely up in arms about it. Um, there's been a petition started to put the road back to the way it was. People are describing their beautiful village as being turned into a parking lot. Um, so I, I don't know how long this will last, whether the, the mayor, Olivia, will you know, stick to her guns and say, no, 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 we need proper parking. Um, the idea has some merit, I guess, because at the moment you have to park on that sort of sandy bit if you want to go and eat at the restaurants or in the residential sandy lanes at the back of those restaurants. So I think the idea was to get traffic off those sandy roads and parked onto the road, but nobody likes it. And really a better solution would be to put a proper parking lot in, in the section behind the, the surf shops, because there's plenty of open land at the back of the sort of surf shop blocks, if that makes sense. So I'll keep you posted, we'll see what happens with that. Now, I hope you're enjoying these videos we're doing for you. If you do enjoy them, please click the like button. It really helps us. I mentioned last week that we have, uh, despite a very big audience on social media, we have a pitiful audience here on YouTube, and I'd really like to see uh, our subscribers and likers and, and videos get much more traction here. Um, and that will encourage me to keep doing this weekly news for you and all the other videos we post to YouTube. So please give us a like, and if you don't already subscribe to this channel, please do. And next up, Carnival is over in Arrecife. Um, it, the Capital Carnival is always the biggest um, and has the most uh, murga bands, the most um, floats and the most interesting stuff to watch. It came to an end on Wednesday this week, as it always does. It's Ash Wednesday, which signifies the end of Carnival. And there was a big parade for the burial of the sardine, which is traditionally how Carnival ends here. And um, a, a huge um, papier-mâché, but beautifully uh, made model of a sardine is carried through the streets with some priests and lots of wailing um, um, uh, women wailing widows um, dressed all in black following along behind it and then it's set on fire and that marks the end of carnival now of course that is the end of carnival for Arrecife but it's just the beginning for the rest of the island and we've already had uh, San Bartolome's carnival this weekend we have uh, Puerto del Carmen and then the whole thing sort of 
goes all around the island to the other resorts, uh, to Aria and Tinajo as well. Um, if you want to know the dates for each of those, uh, just search for Lanzarote Carnival dates on Google and uh, our article on Lanzarote information will come up at the top and, and give you all the information about that. Now, I was interested to see this week that the housing law is, uh, or a new housing law, is being proposed within the Canarian government. And there's quite a lot to it, um, and there are lots of facets to it, but one in particular caused my eye, uh, caught my eye. Now, we do have a problem with affordable housing here on the islands at the moment. The population here has expanded dramatically over the last 10 years, and new build housing hasn't kept up with it. We also have the issue that um, uh, a lot of the property here is given over to holiday letting. So a lot of the villas, for example, and apartments um, are used for holiday lets, so they're not available for people to rent long-term or to buy. And the provision that caught my eye in this new letting law is one whereby the Canarian government will be able to buy partly built properties um, that have been put up by developers who have gone bust or have been repossessed by the banks. Um, and if you drive around Lanzarote, you'll see there's a lot of, uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. You know, there are um, whole housing estates in Playa Blanca, for example, and Costa de Guise, where the developer went bust and uh, they've just been sitting there half built and empty for years. You'll see in the villages lots of properties um, where people have started work and haven't been able to finish it. And in many cases, those properties have been repossessed by the bank to cover the non-payment of a mortgage. So uh, this is something I've been advocating for years. You know, it's ridiculous if we've got a situation where we don't have enough housing for our people when there are perfectly usable properties that have been repossessed or half built and never finished. Uh, so let's just crack on and do it. So I'm, I'm really, really happy to see this in this proposed new uh, housing law. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it actually happens because I think it'll be a really good thing for the islands. And the next story is a bit of a bizarre one. I uh, flipped over a page of the local newspaper La Voz de Lanzarote the other day, and there was a picture of a, a car, an Opel Corsa, I think it was, crashed into the window of the Fiat dealership, Orofakami, in uh, Playa Onda. And uh, your first reaction is, well, how on earth did that happen? Uh, and of course, there's a story to it. The car was being driven by... Uh, 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 a relatively young person who had two other people in the car with him and uh, they approached a police checkpoint the police here regularly put up checkpoints and they just make sure you know cars have their ITV which is like an MOT people haven't been drinking and that kind of thing um, this guy tried to skirt around the checkpoint the Guardia Civil jumped in their car and gave chase and when he got to where the Fiat dealership is he tried to make a very, very sharp right turn to go up the side road, lost control and smashed into the window of the showroom. Now, fortunately, touch wood, um, the three occupants got away with minor cuts and bruises and no one in the showroom dealership was injured. Well, apart from a brand new Fiat Panda, which it, it also crashed into and obviously the damage to the window. Um, inevitably, and you've probably guessed this already, it turned out that uh, the driver tested positive for both drugs and alcohol. So he will be in trouble in the very near future, I'm sure. And January was a record for visitors through the airport. Um, and I, I kind of sound like a broken record, you know, if you read the newsletter that we put out every week, you'll know I've talked pretty much all through 2023 about record after record being broken for occupancy and airport traffic and blah, 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 blah. Um, there's another one. In January this year, um, 671,400 people passed through Lanzarote Airport. That was 6.9% up on January 2023, which is a substantial increase on what was a really, really high number anyway. Um, and these are according to statistics produced by IENA. OK, and before we uh, do the final bit of news, um, just to remind you that if you have any questions about anything I'm talking about on these videos 
or anything else really related to Lanzarote, then please put a comment in below. I read all of the comments um, and uh, I will certainly do my best to reply and let you know what the answer to your question is. Right, the last story, one again very close to my heart. Um, the Cabildo has asked for more taxi cooperation uh, following the very long queues that appeared in Arrecife during various carnival events where people had to wait hours in some cases to get taxis home after the event. For those of you who don't know, the taxi service here is operated on a municip municipality basis. Um, so what that means is if you live in Playa Blanca and you have a taxi and a taxi license for Playa Blanca, you are only allowed to pick up passengers in the municipality of Yaisa um, because Playa Blanca is in Yaisa. So you have the ridiculous situation where a taxi can take a client from Playa Blanca to the airport and then they have to drive all the way back to Yaisa before they're allowed to pick up another passenger. Doesn't matter how many people try and wave them down or, you know, if there's a massive queue at the airport, they are not allowed to pick up a fare from there. And it makes no sense at all. And it's a, a very old archaic system we have here, which the taxi drivers um, uh, protect with, uh, you know, with everything in their fiber for some reason. We really, really need a, a, an island-wide taxi service so that when the airport is super busy, like it is every Saturday, any taxi driver can go there and pick people up. And we have a central. We should have a central control so that you know that's it's being feed, fed back to central control. That look, you know, we've got a queue of fifty people waiting for taxis at the airport. Anyone available, come now, and you'll get a fare. Um, equally, you know, we should be able to. Um, collect somebody in Arrecife, bring them up to Aria, and then pick up someone from Aria and take them to wherever they're going, Costa de Gizé or whatever. Um, I have been talking about this for a long time, and uh, I'm, I hope, I hope above, above all hope, that eventually somebody sees the logic in having a, an island-wide taxi service. But don't hold your breath. I'll keep you posted on that and everything else with these videos that we shoot for you every week. Um, do please like and subscribe and click the notification bell and, and all that sort of cool stuff that YouTubers ask you to do um, because then you will see each time we post these, which we're going to do every Saturday morning, the latest one and you can follow and enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.